Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to talk about SIRS, Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. Alright, let's get started by talking about what is SIRS. SIRS represents a constellation of symptoms that may indicate underlying infection. Generally, all patients who enter their hospital are evaluated for possible SIRS because we don't want to miss an underlying infection as to why they're really coming into the hospital. But keep in the back of your mind that the SIRS criteria may also be due to non-infectious causes, and we'll talk about some of those causes later on. All right, now let's take a look at what the SIRS criteria are. So first off, to meet a diagnosis of SIRS, you have to have at least two of the following criteria met. So first is having a fever or being hypothermic, so a temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius or less than 36 degrees Celsius. This is obviously a response to infection from the creation of prostaglandins and interleukins. Second, you need to have a white count or white blood cell count greater than 12,000 or less than 4,000, another response to infection. Third, you need a respiratory rate greater than 20 beats per minute or a PaCO2 less than 32 millimeters of mercury. Now this is likely due to the fact that if you have an underlying infection, you have an underlying metabolic acidosis. So the body needs to compensate by creating respiratory alkalosis to breathe off that excess acid. So you breathe extremely rapidly when you're infected. Finally, a heart rate greater than 90 beats per minute. So this is likely due to if the patient has some underlying hypotension, some volume loss, the first thing they're going to present with is tachycardia. Now, what are the other considerations when evaluating people for SIRS? So one, if the patient was recently placed on a new drug, always consider drug fever as a possible cause of them being febrile. Two, patients who are taking a beta blocker like metoprolol or propranolol would not have the elevated heart rate that you may see in a patient who was not taking this medication, just because these beta blockers decrease the heart rate. Three, steroid use. So patients who are taking steroids, such as prednisone, may have a leukocytosis or elevated wag count as a reaction to them taking steroids. But always consider the fact that patients who are taking steroids are likely immunocompromised because of the steroids. So they're more likely to develop infections secondary to that. Another consideration is pain. A patient who is breathing very rapidly and has an elevated heart rate could just be in pain, especially with pleuritic pain, they will be splinting, will taking very short breaths, so they'll increase their respiratory rate, as well as arrhythmias can also increase their heart rate as well. Now these factors should not prevent you from labeling someone as having SIRS, but should just be considered an entire clinical picture of the patient so that you have a good and broad differential for why they're having their symptoms. All right, now let's tackle an example. So here we have a 52-year-old male with a past medical history of a kidney transplant on chronic steroids who presents with fever. His blood pressure on arrival is 80 by 56, which is normally actually 120 by 80. His heart rate is 110 with a respiratory rate of 18. He has a temperature of 100.2. His lab work shows a leukocytosis of 18,000. He has an ABG done that shows a pH of 7.1, a PCO2 of 20, a PO2 of 70, a bicarb of 10 on FiO2 of 21%. So does he meet service criteria and should you start antibiotics? So the big question is, does this guy meet the criteria for serves? He has a heart rate of 110 and a leukocytosis of 18,000. You can say the leukocytosis is secondary to his chronic steroids, but either way, he does have a PCO2 of 20. So he meets three SIRS criteria. And just generally, if you look at the big clinical picture, he's a transplant patient on chronic steroids with hypotension and three SIRS criteria. I believe this guy has a high clinical suspicion for an underlying infection. So not only does he meet the criteria for SIRS, but I would place him on antibiotics. And I would think likely sepsis is setting in. So as I said before, make sure to evaluate all your patients who are entering the hospital to see if they meet the SIRS criteria. Because at the very least, you'll need to culture them up, if not place them on antibiotics. So this has been a brief review of SIRS and the criteria used to diagnose SIRS. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a like, place any comments down below, or if you have any suggestions for any future topics, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from my Medical School, and I'll see you next time.